Hello and welcome to the Studio Nora podcast. If you've been here before, welcome back. You know the drill. Uh, and if you're new here, uh, welcome. It's lovely to have you. My name is Noor and I am a knitter and sewist and all-around chaotic person uh, based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And this is a podcast about knitting and sewing and sometimes I do some other crafts. And uh, yeah, this is just where, um, where we talk about that, I guess. Um, if you hear noise, it's kids outside, it's Sunday morning and <laughs> all the dads always get sent out to the playground, which is around the corner. <laughs> Funnily enough, on Sunday morning, it's usually just dads. Um, if you've been here before, you might be wondering if I'm still pregnant. Um, I'm not. I've had my boy, um, my baby boy. He's healthy. I'm healthy. We're all good. Uh, I will talk some more about that at the very end. So if you're not interested in babies, uh, then you don't have to hear about it. Um, usually I write everything that I mentioned down below and there are chapters. So if you hover your mouse or your finger over the time bar, you can see, uh, like all the, well, there's only one FO today, um, but all the whips and like all the chapters. So you can skip around if you are so inclined. Um... Yeah, so what I'm wearing today, I am wearing my Advent Ranunculus. Let me try and show you all the colors. Da, 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 da. Um, I talked about it last episode as well. Uh, it is the Ranunculus by Knit Cafe Midori, I think. Everybody knows the Ranunculus, I think, by now. Um, and it is knit up in my advent calendar, or half of my advent calendar by Studio Solas uh, in Blueface Leicester, sport weight, and I love it. I've been wearing it almost, almost every day since baby was born, because uh, it now fits. <laughs> um, what I didn't tell you last time or in the last episode is that I I uh, cast this on when I was 38 or 39 weeks pregnant. That's the cat and the door. Um, and if you're not familiar with this design, it's a round yoke. Uh, but then after all the lace and textures, there's a bit of raglan increases. So I did the whole yoke, um, and then I did the raglan increases, and then I wanted to split for sleeves. Um, but the idea is that you have four raglan increases, because two for each arm. And I split for sleeves, and the first one went fine. Sorry, I have a sneeze. The first one went fine, and then I wanted to do the second sleeve, but it was only one raglan increase left, so it only done three. So I had to rip out up until the the yoke again. Um, picking up stitches was very annoying because I don't know. I just did it. Didn't go well. I couldn't really. Uh, Like, I wasn't really following one row of stitches, and there was, of course, no lifeline. So it, it, it was a whole thing. Um, but it's fine. <laughs> the only thing I wish I would have changed is I actually made a mistake. You're supposed to cast on the twisted rib in the main needle. Um, and I used a five as the main needle and then a four for the ribbing. Uh, but... I cast on in a four and I should have done a five because it's still, this is the wide neckline, but it's quite tight. Um, and it, it likes to, it doesn't exactly ride up, but because it's not as wide as it's supposed to, like it touches the base of my neck and I don't really like that. Um, but other than that, it's fine and I love it uh, and it's great. Oh, and we have some sun peeking through the clouds. Let's hope that we're fine. Um, 
I hope that you have some coffee or tea or a warm or cold beverage of your choice and maybe some knitting or crafting and let's just wait until the sun is gone again <sighs> shouldn't take too long because we haven't seen the sun in weeks weeks okay it's almost gone again Really, this is the time you decide to shine. Okay. Um, so for finished objects, I have none uh, except for one healthy baby boy, on whom we'll talk more at the end. Uh, I do have uh, a couple works in progress. Um, this is a new cast on. Um, it's the yarn I showed last time that I received from my husband when he was in Nottingham. Um, it's a commercial yarn, I lost the ball band, uh, and I'm just doing my regular vanilla sock, 64 stitches, 20 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing, and then a heel flap and gusset, uh, it's quite fun, um, and I will have plenty left over, uh, so I'm planning to make a pair of baby socks as well. Um, I cast this on... Two days after I gave birth, and it's quite a nice like little project um, to work on. The only thing is that these are quite pointy needles, and I have to be careful where I leave it, <laughs> uh, so I don't ac accidentally sit on it on the couch or stab the baby with it. <clears throat> um, so that's going quite well. This is the first sock. Everything is fine. Um, then I have my notes down here. Oh yes, I don't remember how far oh how far I was with um with the champagne cardigan. Um I don't remember at all. I haven't made any progress on it, I think. Uh I'm just at the yoke or the top. Um and I'm knitting it up in brushed alpaca from Drops and Thrive. Uh, which is an unspun by wool and twine. Um, somebody gave me a very insightful comment um, on the last episode, so I must have showed it, or the swatch at least. Uh, but this fabric is quite dense, and I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles. Um, and that's half a needle size, or one needle size smaller than prescribed in a pattern I think uh, but she said uh, make sure to test your gauge for the um, band ne no it's just the, 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 the band the neck band I guess but it goes it's an open cardi you, you, you know the band that goes around the cardi because um, that's supposed to be knit on three millimeter needles with quite a tight gauge and my gauge is already quite or my fabric is already quite tight um, so I might not be able to do that and I don't want to do a uh, two by two rib because this band is double knit and it looks really nice and it's one of the reasons I chose this cardigan um, so she said maybe to test for the gauge for that or maybe to see if drops has like a thin a thin yarn to go with this one and in the same color because then you keep kind of like the same feel of the fabric but you will be able to reach the required gauge um that is a long way off because <laughs> this is going to take a long while to knit but i think that's a really good idea so if and when not if. When I reach that point, I will, um, I will look into that. Um, also, I forgot to mention at the top, uh, I have a tiny bit of a Q&A uh, towards the end, um, because it's fun and I've been podcasting for a year. So people ask questions and I have some answers. Uh, then, my 
Winter's Beach Cardi is going incredibly well. Um, last time you saw me, I was about here. Since then, I have split for a front panel. Um, so this is the start of the front panel. I need like five more centimeters and it's a lot of fun. It's going well. It's um, the pattern is by Andrea Maori and I'm knitting it in drops soft tweed in the color pebble, I think. Um, but yeah, it's going quite well and it's fun. I'm having fun with it. Especially now I'm doing the front panel, it's really easy to just do a couple rows um, in between things and um, no complaints here. I'm just a bit nervous about the um, afterthought pocket that I will have to put in at some point. <clears throat> but I think I did everything correctly up until now. There's two lifelines and then a waist yarn. And that's what the instructions said to do. So I feel like I'm flying through this. I probably am, but that's why we have a QA. Um, all right, let's stuff you over here. Then my last work in progress is the Mini Woodwardia from the magazine uh, Pom Pom, uh, from the Mini Pom book they brought out. And you might remember that last time, uh, I was, it, it was, it's written for DK uh, weight yarn. This is a fingering. It's from Susan Crawford's A Room of One's Own. Uh, let's. It is the buyer fingering uh, base in Rusty Tractor and it's 400 meters per 100 gram. So I thought I'll just hold a double. It's a kid's sweater. I won't swatch. Everything will be fine. I got quite a long way and then I measured my gauge and it was way off. Um, and you lovely people told me in the comments that the gauge that is written for the pattern is very tight for a DK. Uh, so now I am, oh, and there were lovely people walking me through the math to make it work, but the pregnancy brain could not handle the math. Uh, and I did make a swatch holding it single, uh, and I was bang on gauge even after blocking. So I'm just holding it single now. And this is where I'm at. Uh, it has these lovely, I don't know if you can see, raglan increases. Uh, and I'm just now on a body. Um, and it has like a bar. It's a bit dark. I don't know if you can see, but it has a bar down the side uh, with some interest. So I'm just knitting away on it. It's knit on three and a half millimeter needles, so it's not going super fast, um, but it's nice to just knit a couple stitches on every now and then. So yeah, uh, thank you for the advice and uh, holding it single is just working out splendidly. I blocked my swatch and the yarn blooms quite nicely. So I think it'll be a very nice uh, supple sweater for the baby. Uh, this is for about 12 months, um, so like next fall, this fall, he could wear it probably already. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. So it's going quite well after the disastrous first try. I even wrote down in my notes, not swatching who cares or something like that. It's stupid. It's probably why why it didn't work out. But you know. Oh, I actually lied. I do have a finished object, but it's not um it's not knitting. Uh it's an illustration. So, um last time I told you that I want to illustrate uh, the birth announcement cards, uh, which actually is a thing in the rest of the world, uh, as you have told me, um, which is nice to know. I w I'll, sh I'll show you the outside. I'm quite proud of it. So I made it uh, with watercolors and then I scanned the individual pieces and I kind of put it all together. Um, so, oh, there's sun again. We'll wait for the sun.
We haven't had any sun. And the moment I decide to film, it's like, hello. So coming up are uh, some acquisitions, because uh, it was my birthday, uh, and a little Q&A, and then... Is the sun ever going to go away? Um, so a little Q&A uh, with a couple questions, and then uh, if, if the boy is awake, uh, we can do a little show and tell of my proudest make yet. Alright, um, so this card, the birth announcement, uh, this is it. And it wraps around. That's our little cat. He's called Sammy. Uh, yeah, my little logo in the back. Focus. And I'll show you the inside without like showing all private details. Um, as a little birdie. And then his name, and he was born when he was born, and where, and um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Was a bit intimidated, to be honest, because I haven't done watercolors in a long time. Um, but it worked out fine, I think. All right, uh, let's do acquisitions first. You know what? I'm actually going to move because the sun keeps poking up. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. Right, we are back in an old spot because I can sit on the floor again. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, this is my bookcase, art by my grandmother, art by my other grandmother, more art, pictures. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, recently was also uh, not only the birth of my son, but my birthday as well. Um, and there was Christmas, so uh, I have some acquisitions. Um, to start with, this gorgeous book, uh, The Colors of Nature, Basic DIY for Natural Dying, um, by uh, Gould, I think it's pronounced. Um, and I think it is sort of similar to dye books I already have, um, but this is focused on also foraging in Scandinavia, but might be able to find stuff here as well. Um, and it's just a lovely resource and it's a lovely book. So I got that from my mother-in-law, it's really nice. And then for my birthday, I gave myself some gifts and the husband gave me some gifts. Um, let's start with a gift to myself. Uh, you might know this little dye shop uh, called Ginger and Thyme. Uh, this is their logo. The sun is chasing us. Um, and it's a dye shop in Belgium, but they ship all over Europe, at least, I think. Uh, and they dye their own stuff, and they have, like... Um, They have other yarns in her shop as well. Um, so I ordered several things. First, I ordered this lovely yarn. It is Highland 100% wool. Uh, it's 225 meters per 100 grams, so it's like DK. Um, and the color is frozen. Um, it's lovely, like, I see, like, I really got the color. Uh, and I thought maybe two skeins would be enough to make a little cardigan for a little someone. Uh, then I got three skeins of Fog, which is a blown yarn. Uh, I love this color. Um, it is 44% Pima Cotton, 28% Baby Alpaca, and 28% Fine Merino Wool. Uh, it's sport weight, I would say. It's 300 meters per 100 grams. I got three skeins and I was thinking a cardigan, uh, a tiny cardigan, or maybe, I don't know yet. 
but it's going in my stash and it makes me happy. Then I also got some stitch markers. So first I got this tiny little progress keeper. Wait. There, it's a little bee. Uh, and I also got these lovely stitch markers with like, I don't think it's real turquoise, but it's turquoise-y thingies. And they're really cute. Um, so yeah, that's Ginger and Time. I'll link their shop in the show notes. And then we get to the mother load, the present I got from my husband. Um, I got to order it, because I got to order exactly what I liked. Um, so let's, let's start with the small things. First, I got this sock yarn, durable sock tweed. It has like all these nice flex in it. Um, and it's nice. Then, more sock yarn in a DK. Is it a DK? It's 150 grams or 300 meters. I think that sort of works down to a DK way. Um, it's a Novita campaign collection in this lovely rainbow. Mm, so I'm gonna make myself some socks. It's 75% wool and 25% polyamide and I think that's good because I love my natural sock but I've noticed that I tend to walk around the house and the stairs on just my socks sorry there's a fly thingy um which is not very good for any kind of sock especially if it's got no plastic in it um so yeah then we'll get to the biggest one last first I also got this Nofita Nordic Baby uh, pattern book. Mostly interested in this cardigan, I have to say. <laughs> oh, my camera recognizes that this is a baby. That's funny. Um, 10 Nordic Baby hand knit patterns. And they're cute. So I got it. Um, but damn. Oh, I'm so happy with this present. First, I got some, um, well, this will tell you what it is. I got these sock needles for Magic Loop. I got extra cables. And then, I'm so spoiled and so happy. It comes in this package. And it is the... Um, It is the knitting needle set, uh, the 13 centimeters from 2.75 to 5 millimeter needle. Uh, it comes with cables and I believe, yeah, it has like these thingies with it. Um, cause I noticed that I really, I really like the Chow Gu needles. Even though they're metal and they're slippery and they're cold, I still really, really like them. I also really like the noise they make, like metal needles make the ticking noise and it just, I don't know, I like that. Um, and yeah, I just thought if I'm getting a present and I get to spend a lot of money, uh, then I want to spend it on something that will last. Um, and I've been using, like, I have separate needles in a chow gu for three and a half four and four and a half but they're all used right now and if i want to cast something extra on i can't or i could but not on those needles so i just thought extras don't hurt and then i got a whole bunch of extra cables because i love the cables and um yeah really happy with it so those were all my acquisitions I felt very, very spoiled for my birthday, um, even though I spent it <laughs> in bed, breastfeeding mostly. Um, so yeah, um, then let's move to a little q and A. I I hope you still have something nice to drink. By the way, I've had this cup 
since I was like five, I think. We don't really have a grown-up uh, collection of cups, we just have all the cups that we've had for 30 years. <laughs> all right, um, so let's do a couple questions. Um, I think this is gonna be a sort of weird podcast edition, but life is weird, what are you gonna do? So first question is, uh, I know that you teach English as your career. Have you traveled to English speaking countries? Um, so I do teach English, uh, high school English uh, to kids from 12 to 18. Um, if you're familiar with the Dutch high school system, um, am I in focus? I don't know. Um, I teach the two upper levels. Um, so we have three-ish levels of high school, and I do the middle and the upper. Um, so I teach English. Um, I have studied English literature and language in university, and I did a master's in English literature. I have traveled to English-speaking countries uh, after high school. I was very much done with school. <laughs> uh, and I spent uh, two months with my aunt in Uruguay which is not an English speaking country. And then I went to Australia for half a year. Um, and I worked at a Jack Roo Jillaroo school, uh, which is basically like a ranch school where backpackers come to learn how to ride a horse, fix a fence, drive cattle. Um, did I say drive a horse? Oh, I teach English. No, ride a horse, like how to tech up, how to do basic writing uh basic sheep sharing like that they've seen everything once before um so i worked there uh as a volunteer i was paid a little but basically you don't have to pay me to ride horses all day every day <laughs> through hills and mountains um so yeah i spent half a year there um, and then it was time to go home and I didn't want to, uh, but I had to, um, I've also, uh, let's see, English speaking countries. I've been to England several times. I really like Cornwall, uh, Guernsey, anything with cliffs, really. I am very happy if I get to ramble around cliffs and sea. And Cornwall just has the most amazing cliffs, Devon as well. Guernsey is just, half of the island is a cliff, basically. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mm, other sp English speaking countries, not really. I've never been to America or uh, the, the USA. I've never been to Canada. I would really like to visit Canada. Um, I want to visit the USA as well, but I think Canada more. I don't know why. It's a feeling. Um, so yeah, I have traveled a fair bit, um, also spent time in Southeast Asia, um, and then all over Europe, really. Not all over, but I've seen a fair bit. Um, then, another question. Uh, do you live in an apartment or a house? So, uh, I live in Amsterdam and we live in an apartment uh, because if you have uh, like a full house in Amsterdam, you are very, very, very rich. Um, and I'm a high school teacher, so I'm not that. Uh, so we live in a beautiful apartment. Um, we are looking to maybe relocate to a house outside of Amsterdam, uh, but for now we're very happy in our apartment. Um, also, how many shawls have you knitted? It's another question I got. Uh, surprisingly little. I tried to count. I've come to three. Three for myself. I've knit the Varda shawl, the Stay Soft shawl, and the uh, most recent Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. Uh, and then I've knit like two bandana cowls, like the big pointy ones. Um, yeah, just a bandana cowl with a, with a point. Um, and that's it, really. I have many, many shawls, like, not shawls, uh, scarves. Uh, so I don't really need to add to that collection, but I want to. Um, so yeah, surprisingly little. I know that, 
um, Amber from a lovely yarn podcast. She did um, she did an edition on shawls, uh, twenty one shawls or something, um, and I was like surprised because I thought she did not knit 21 shawls right because there were 21 different designs so we got to talking and she said well I probably knit more because I do a lot of prayer shawls I was like 20 more than 21 shawls I get it she's been knitting for a long time I've been knitting for two three years but still I'm not a shawl knitter I guess not because I don't like it but I don't know um I have Two questions left. Second to last is, how is my grandmother? Uh, she is very well. Uh, it was really fun because on my birthday, she visited us uh, and my mom came along as well, my father, uh, which meant that we have four generations in one room because it's my grandmother, my mother, me, and my baby boy. Uh, I'll show you a picture. It was really nice. Bear in mind, I had just given birth. Um, so it don't look my best, uh, but it was, it was so precious. She even held the baby. Usually she refuses to hold babies because she has very bad hands and she's afraid that she'll let him fall. She refused to hold my nephew when he was born because this is the second time she's become a great grandmother. Um, but she held him for a little bit and we have a picture with the four of us, which I'll pop here. Um, and she's doing very well. Actually, I have to call her today because uh, usually on Saturdays I visit, but I haven't really left the house all that much yet. <laughs> uh, and I would be nervous to put the baby in the car. He's like, because he was born at home. Uh, he only left this house for the first time when he was eight days old. <laughs> um, so, yeah, which leads me to the last question. Um will we get to see your precious baby boy? And I think you will. Uh, he's not gonna, like, I'm not gonna start a baby vlog or, like, I don't know. Um, but I will show him, because he's the best thing I ever made. Um, so yeah, for those people who are interested a little, well, I, get, I, I guess that this podcast has been very baby heavy, um, you'll have to excuse me. It's the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, next ones won't be so baby heavy. Uh, but for those interested, um, you might know that I wanted to have a home birth, uh, which I did. In the end, I didn't really have a choice, though, uh, because um, uh, the first 14 hours of labor, uh, nothing much happened in uh, terms of what is it called? Dilation? Because um, there was only two and a half centimeters in the first 14 hours. Um, and then they decided, or well, we decided to break my... I don't know any of these words in English, I have to say. In active vocabulary. They broke my waters and then in two hours it was go, go, go. Um, couldn't be moved. Didn't want to me. I did want a pain relief, but I did not want to be moved. I couldn't have been moved anyways because it was already happening. Um, so yeah, in a whirlwind of pain um, and intenseness, uh, the baby boy was born uh, quarter past eight in the uh, in the evening, and he's fine. I'm fine. We're all fine. It was. I was not prepared for how intense labor is. Even if I would have taken a course beforehand, I would not have been prepared because it's just force of nature you you can't describe. Uh, I'm very happy. I wasn't aware of how intense it was um, or would be. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was both the most horrible and the most beautiful day of my life so far. Um, and everything is going well. We had a uh, maternity... Oh, we talked about this. I don't know the term for it. Maternity carer uh, coming to our house eight days uh, to help us get like comfortable with nursing and to 
it's basically a crash course how to take care of your baby. Uh, there was a checklist involved. It's a very thorough, long checklist. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really nice. And we had a very quiet first week. We only had the grandparents fit or our parents visit uh, and my sis-in-law. And then since then, friends have been coming over. But I have to say that taking care of a newborn is very intense. So if people come to visit, like they kind of take up the prime time uh, in a day when he's when we have the most time. Um, and then we get very tired after that. <laughs> We're also uh, dabbling in washable diapers. Um, so that means extra laundry, which is fine. Um, but it's also learning what works best for us. Not just washable diapers. We have to learn what works best for us. And it's, uh, it's fun. It's intense. Sometimes it's very emotional. Also, pregnancy hormones have not left the building yet. <sighs> so, yeah. But it's been good. It's been very good. I even got in it a fair bit, I have to say, in between everything. Hmm. Let's see if we can get the boy from his dad. Also, my part, my husband uh, has paternity leave for several weeks, so he's been at home, which is really nice. <laughs> because if before the uh, since two years fathers got um so they always got five days off then two years ago it became six weeks and now there's a new thing where you can get an extra nine weeks off with 70 percent pay which i also get um so he's he will be home for the first two and a half months of olivier's life which is by the way his name olivier uh in english it would be oliver um but we call him olivier it's spelled in a Dutch way. Uh, so he, my husband, is home for two and a half months, which is really nice because if he would have gone back after five days, I, I don't know how people do that. Like, it's so intense. I'm very happy he's home and that we get paid and that we have good parent leave with at least, so I get... 10 weeks after birth I get 10 weeks full pay and then I took the nine weeks of 70% pay um, so that means that I will have to go back to school or work uh, in June somewhere which is really good I can't imagine going back to work now Whew. no um so yes that was kind of the mother load of baby stuff and knits and all my birthday gifts and i'm gonna see if the little boy is awake or not i'll be right back <sighs> What are you doing? Waking up is not his favorite thing ever. It takes him like 15 minutes to be ready. <laughs> yeah. You want to show off a little bit more? Let's see. Oh, no, not camera ready. Hey. There we go. He's just chilling. Hmm. You're just chilling. Basically, he's the best thing I ever made. Um, and the sleepiest thing I ever made. This is a good view. Uh, 
as you can see, he's still very sleepy. So we're gonna let the boy sleep. You can drink in an hour again. Meow. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I have to tell and show you today. Um, I'll be back in another couple of weeks. Um, if you have any advice or comments, please leave them down below. I love to talk to you there. Um, oh, by the way, if you like baby spam, um, you can follow my personal account on Instagram, um, which is Leonore Fleur. I'll link it down below. Uh, knitting content is on Studio Nora. Uh, on Instagram and if you like this episode give it a like and subscribe to stick around That's it. I'll see you next time. Bye